guys, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna start something new here today. We're gonna do like a little vlogging series because I'm kind of getting into cooking. So what I wanna do is just vlog me cooking and you can cook with me, I don't care what you cook. You can cook the same thing as me. Maybe you'll learn something new. Or you can just cook and we can just vibe. We can clean together, we can cook together and we can listen to the word together. So I want you to recommend some of your favorite preachers that you want me to listen to and I'll just put their sermon in the background and we can just feel uplifted and our food could turn out good. <laughs> good vibes, good spirits, good food. So yeah, um, I'm working on getting my camera together because I like just set it anywhere and I don't realize like, hey bitch, you're not on camera. I'm sorry for missing, but yes, I'm not on camera. <laughs> So I just need to get a real camera and stop using my phone and just figure out my life. So enjoy this awkwardly new vlogging series I got going on. Obstacle in your life that he is God, that no weapon formed against you. I feel the spirit of God. Sometimes God will raise up something to take it down. Oh, I feel the Lord. You raise up a strong enemy. You raise up an obstacle. And you're like, God, where are you? And God is saying, I'm right behind you. I know you can't see me, but as soon as that thing gets close, I'm going to take his head off. Goliath was raised up for David. And so we got to learn how to look at an obstacle. We got to learn how to look at a giant. And I believe that we're in a season, we're in a time, family. You got to hear me. I believe that God is getting ready to do some crazy things. That's why, as a believer, you got to be bold. That's why, as a believer, you got to be full of faith. Now is not a time to start pushing back and start compromising and start going to plan A or plan B, C, and D. Now is a time for you to plant your feet in the ground, stand up flat footed, open your mouth, and decree what God has spoken. To you. That's the moment that we're in. I feel like I can't get off of this because this is the real prophetic part. You're getting ready to see it. Things that eyes haven't seen, things that ears haven't heard, things that haven't even shut up. I'm trying to teach it and I'm not I'm trying not to get lost in this thing, but I feel that God is doing something in it. Maybe if this is just hitting you hard, maybe we can just take about six seconds and just worship. And just worship and just worship and just worship because this family this 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 is for you this is for you this is for you this is your word this is not just her word or his word this is not just your neighbor's word this is your word and I decree by the Spirit of God it's gonna come to pass in your life God's getting ready to do crazy things He's getting ready to do wild things. He's getting ready to do awesome things. He's getting ready to shift some things. He's getting ready to take those who were the tail and bring them right back to their rightful positions as the head. I hear God saying, the last shall be first. Where are my underdogs in God's house? I'm looking for the underdog. God is getting ready to have him come from the back, bring you straight to the front because he's just that type of God. If you believe it, come on, give him glory with me. For his purposes, for his glory, God ain't losing, he's not failing, he is God, and every knee is going to, every knee will bow, every knee will bow because he is the truth. It's not even going to be every knee is going to bow because I, I just want to willingly bow. The same way, I wish I had a good analogy. The same way this platform has to hold me. But this platform doesn't have an opinion. It was created to hold me. Are you tracking what I'm saying? The, the seats that you're sitting in, they don't have an opinion. They were created to hold you. So people aren't going to bow because they want to. We will. But the reality of the truth of who God is, is getting ready to be manifest that it's going to force. But what I want to talk about tonight is that... Is that what I'm talking about today, I think it's night. <laughs> Maybe it is. You don't know. Hallelujah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's night in some other parts of the world. It's like, anyway, anyway, just, you know, just go with me. We're going we're to move on. Hallelujah. Just stay focused, PT. But here is the thing. This thing 
that God is going to do in the earth. These things that God is doing that will shake the earth, God is going to do for people. I don't want to tell you, sell you this fantasy and this fairy tale where you can be normal and experience extraordinary things. No, no, no. What, what God is doing in the earth, He's going to do through His people. He's going to do through what the Scripture calls the ecclesia, and that was the Greek word that was translated in church is the ecclesia, the called out ones. This, this tribe. Hallelujah! I'm feeling. It. And I'm saying this with you because I want him to be able to do it through you. And I want him to be able to do it for you. But, but there is a tribe that God is raising up in the earth. And this is a tribe of people who know who they are. This is a tribe of people who have been tried and refused to try. Who raise up and are ready to even be tried again. Because they are so convinced in the God that they serve. That they won't back down. They will not relent. Off. It, it, it's, it's a special type of person. It, it's a people. This is a people who will go from believing to knowing. Let, let's talk about the difference between the two. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. Talk different. because because you you've heard you've heard that believing is awesome and believing is awesome. It is awesome. There, there are times when. I just believe God. I, I just believe Him. And, and it's wonderful, right? Because when we believe God, it, it pleases Him. It pleases Abraham. You know, he, he believed God and, and it was accounted to Him for righteousness, right? And typically, when I just believe God, there is a space in my belief for an alternative outcome. When I just believe God, it is possible for me to believe God, but not to have all of myself committed to what I believe. Okay, I'll take my time and talk to two or three people. Come on, give listen up. Listen. Come on, everybody. There, there are times when I am legitimately believing God, but there is a space in my heart for another outcome. And, and I'm too spiritual. Listen. Come on, everybody. There are times when I am legitimately believing God, but there is a space in my heart for another outcome. And, and I'm too spiritual to say it, but, but I'm not committed. I haven't pushed all of my chips. Not that any of you gamble, I don't know why I use that analogy. <laughs> I, I haven't placed all of my, I, I'm not betting on God fully. Can I take a moment and drive down your street? I, I believe him. I, I, you know, I, I'm hopeful about something, but but I'm not convinced. And there's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's, I, I'm hopeful. I, I believe it. I'm somewhat optimistic. But if it didn't come through, I'd be like, okay. And maybe it's, I'm in this if it be your will place. Right? That, 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 that's, that's believing God. But there's another level. There's another level. And, and I'll be honest with you. This level requires some participation from God himself. I'll be honest with you. I recently, if I might just testify. I recently went from believing that something was going to happen to knowing that something was going to happen. And, 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 and to be honest with you, I didn't know that there was another level to my belief. That's a nice answer. I, I thought when I was in the belief zone that I was actually where I needed to be. I thought that that was enough. I believe, I thank God, I believe. I, I even kind of like claimed it. And in that moment, and in that season, in that space, I actually thought that it was enough but there is another gear. And, and so what happened to me, we got a lot of the ground to cover, but, but what happened to me was all of a sudden, it went from me believing that this wonderful thing was going to happen to knowing 
that what I was expecting was going to happen. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta paint this. I gotta paint this picture. I gotta paint this picture. I, I went from being optimistic about it, which is wonderful, and then somehow in my spirit, what I was hoping for went beyond what I was expecting, but went and became knowledge. Oh God, I, I gotta say this right, I gotta say this right. It, it, it was beyond what I thought was gonna happen or what I really, really was convinced of. It went, it went beyond that. It became knowledge just as, just, just look at the person next to you. There is no doubt in your mind that they are there wearing what they are wearing. You have no doubt, you don't even need no faith for that. It is knowledge, it is truth. That's what happened about this thing. And the crazy thing is, that thing had, it still hasn't happened. But the way I feel about it is that it has already happened on the inside of me and, and my friends and I love them and they're saying we're gonna keep on their fingers crossed and all that kind of stuff and that's wonderful because it didn't happen to them. But for me, that thing that I'm hoping for has already happened, it has become my truth, it has become knowledge and I'm in a whole nother zone. In fact, I'm past it happening. I'm looking at the outcomes that will take place because it happened. That's when you know you move from believing to knowing. It's when you already see past that thing that you're hoping for and you begin to make plans about what that thing will manifest down the road. If that's you, if you got a revelation, if you're ready to go from believing to knowing, do me a favor and celebrate Jesus with me. I'll be honest with you, I don't think that, I don't think that you can just take anything and make it that. I think that, that God, I think that God gets involved to bring you to that place. And that's what I want to talk about. That's, that's the text. That's the text. Let's go to it really quickly. Because I believe that the text, I believe that the text deals with these awkward and complicated realities that we all face in our walks with God, and it deals with times, watch this, when our natural senses cannot support what God is doing in our lives. Sometimes God cannot wait for your natural senses to catch up to what He is doing. And our natural senses, we're going to get into it in just a second, but our natural senses are what we rely upon to function in the earth. And that's wonderful. Those are gifts from God. It's a wonderful thing. But sometimes God has to supersede your sight, your hearing, and your feelings to get you to what he's trying to do in your life because you have to cooperate with it you have to participate with it and so god will say listen i don't care if your eye hasn't seen it i don't care if your ear hasn't heard it i don't care if your heart doesn't believe it i'm going to manifest it. i'm going to show you i feel god let's look at it let's go let's go to text <clears throat> let's go to text and so and so it says but it is written i want you to see the conundrum it says but it is written Eye has not seen, that is a deficit. Nor ear heard, that is a deficit. Eye has not seen, take out my eyes. Ear has not heard, plug up my ears. Nor has it entered into the heart of man, take my feelings out of the game. The things which God has prepared for them. The conundrum is this. That, there, that God has a reality. And, and, and it says that the things that God has prepared, not is preparing, not is getting ready to prepare, God has prepared. It is settled, thy word is settled in heaven. It, it, it is settled. The things that God has prepared, the things that are stored up for me, exist. But the conundrum is, no eye has seen. Can't see it. Can't hear it. I can't fit. 
So right there is a conundrum. We get excited about that, but that's a predicament. God has prepared something for me that is reality, but the things that I use to measure reality, like my sight, like my hearing, like what I feel, have that there is a divide between the reality of God and my perceived realities. And Paul is breaking down this to us because he wants to understand that God is not governed by your natural senses, which means that neither should you be and then he further discusses how this all takes place right so it says for no eye is seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for those who love him just do me a favor and just say God has prepared something for you tell me somebody say God is God has prepared something for you God God is prepared he has prepared something for you hallelujah he has prepared. He has prepared before you got here. He out of, I feel the Lord. Before you got here, he has prepared things for you. They are in front of you. And that's why you cannot be stuck in the past. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead of me. I press toward the mark. No matter where you are, there's more. 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 Oh, oh, this is too much. There's more. There's more. I know I is seen. No ear is heard. It has an inch in your heart. See, God can't trust your heart because sometimes your heart doesn't have the capacity to receive what God wants to do in your life. Sometimes your insides are not big enough to dream with God because oftentimes your heart and your insides have been shaped by, by your past experiences, by your family, by this and that. And that's why he's saying, no eye has seen. You've never seen this before. No one has even heard what I'm getting ready to do in your life. And your heart, don't trust your heart. It's too small. I'm getting ready to break something out that's bigger than you, that's bigger than your city, that's bigger than your industry, that's bigger than your family. Something is getting ready to break out in your life that's bigger than your and sometimes that's why the miracle takes so long is because God is stretching your insides oh I feel the Holy Spirit he's stretching your insides I got it. you're not ready I know you want it but you're really not ready for it because it's bigger than what you think he said ask of me and I'll give you the nations and you won't even know how to ask with a little heart and so there will be moments for well, God has to bypass your ability to see. He has to bypass what you have a tendency to look at. He has to bypass your hearing. You ain't never even heard nothing like God. You haven't even heard it like you, 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 Even your circles are as wonderful, wonderful as your circles are. And we'll talk about that in a second, I think. Even as wonderful as your circles are, the conversation is still too low. That's why sometimes it just has to be you and God. Because God is going to speak to you on a level that is greater and higher than the level that most of the people in your life. If you have one person, a spouse, a best friend, if you have one person that can speak to you on a level, you're doing well. But sometimes even that person will not get it. Sometimes only you and God will get it. Because it has to do with your makeup. It has to do with your background. It has to do with your now. And it has to do with your future. And only God has the knowledge of all those things. No eye is seen, no ear is heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. Those things that God has prepared for those who love him. It says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So, so here is the bypass. I'm bypassing your eyes because you haven't seen it. I'm bypassing your ears because you, you've never heard this before. And I'm bypassing your heart because your heart can't be trusted anyway. And your heart is limited to your experiences, right? So I'm going to bypass all of that because those things will, if you rely upon that exclusively, they will keep you from tapping into what I have already prepared for you. In other words, there are some things that are done. They're done. They're done. There's some things that are already done. Oh, 
hallelujah. It, it, God is not behind the scenes making it. He is not behind the scenes putting it together. It has been put together before you got here. The moment that you took your first breath, it has been placed out there in the universe waiting for times and seasons. Hallelujah. I've argued a number of times. I don't know if God has to do anything else. I believe that he did it and just set it in motion. And just set it in motion. And we catch up to what he did. And then we say, oh, oh God, God, you too much. So he bypasses all of that. But he still has to get us to somehow participate with what he is doing because he needs us to come into alignment with it in order for it to happen. So how does it get us to something that is that transcends our ability to see here and to hold within our hearts? How does he get it to us? He supersedes and bypasses all of that by the Spirit. <laughs> That's one of the greatest gifts that God has given to you and I. He's given us his Spirit. Let's read more about the Spirit. It says, but God has revealed. He didn't reveal by sight. He didn't reveal by hearing. He didn't reveal by heart. He revealed by spirit. He revealed by spirit. It says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. And then it breaks down the spirit. It says, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Ooh. Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So the spirit of God, the spirit of God, is a searcher of knowledge and truth that our eyes cannot perceive, that our ears cannot hear, and that our heart cannot hold. In other words, I am not limited to my natural function. When I'm a believer, I have access to something, and the whole job of that thing is to search out <laughs> the mind of God. Is to search out God's mind. That's what the Spirit does. And that's why, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I had this encounter just the other night, and, and I am an avid reader. I love books. I read a lot of books, a lot of uh, business books. I read a lot of um, uh, what you would call self-help books. I'm always, I want to be better. I want to be better. And, uh, and I was getting ready to read this book. And it's a great book. And then th this, this passage popped up on my phone. You know, because I have, I'm, I'm described to like the version Bible. You can set it up to where the, the verse of the day comes. And some of you probably have that. And, and I was getting ready to go and search and read this book. It was a great book. And then this verse pops up. And it was looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of your faith. And I'm like... Oh, you want me to press the Lord? <laughs> you know, and it's wonderful. I'm not, I love books and I read books and I encourage you to read books. Sometimes your best friends are going to be authors. Because sometimes it's going to take an author for, author for a season that you're in. It's going to take, an, only an author is going to be able to feed you. It's going to be able to stimulate you on the level that you're on. So sometimes my best friends, I've never met them, but sometimes my best friends are authors of books. Are you tracking with me? So I love books, but sometimes... In that moment, it's the middle of the night, and I'm getting ready to read from my author, I'm getting ready to have communion with an author that I enjoy, that verse pops up and says, look unto Jesus, the author, oh, I didn't see that, the author and finisher of your faith. In other words, these books are wonderful, and you should read them, and God can speak to you through authors and through books, absolutely. Wholeness is one of those, Purpose Awakening is one of those, very shameless, but I'm sorry. And there are a number of other books out there, right? But <laughs> right, right, it's some testimony. So, so, but, but, but sometimes the, the, the limitation with those books is that they are not the author and the finisher of your faith. So it will help you in one area, but it can't help you in all areas. And so, so for me, it was basically saying, search out the Lord. It's basically saying, pursue the Spirit, because the Spirit already knows everything. The Spirit leads you into being exposed to the mind, the thoughts, the insides, and the insights of God, and the insights of God have your future in them. And so that's what it says. And so, and so I want to go a little deeper. There's just kind of a few thoughts that I want to I want to bring you to as it relates to going into this 
to this knowing zone, to this knowing zone. And, uh, and as I mentioned before, God has to, when God is going to move you from believing to knowing, He engages you. He gets involved in that process. And what He would do and what happened with me is He basically revealed that this is what's going to happen. And really what He's doing when He reveals something to you and God speaks to you, what He's doing is He's giving you an opportunity to get pregnant. He is providing the seed. And if you seize that moment, then you will be pregnant. And therefore, it is just a matter of time before you birth that thing if you do not abort it. Are you tracking with it? I feel that for somebody. If you do not abort it. What do I mean by abort? If you don't let go of it. And I'll tell you right now, you, you got to fight to keep what God gives you. Especially when it's a knowing thing. Because when it's a knowing thing, and I'm going to show you in the text, when it's a knowing thing, sometimes you will not get a lot of human support. <laughs> oh, let me show you. Let me show you something. Let me show you. I want you to look at verse 11 real quick. Verse 11 says, it says, mm -hmm. it says, for the spirit searches all things, just the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him. Now watch this. It says, even so, no one knows the things of God Except the Spirit of God, which means that sometimes when the Spirit of God brings you a truth, it's going to be a lonely truth. Okay, I'm going to talk to you just for a second. It says right there, Paul is teaching. See, he's trying to teach us how to go from believing to knowing and to living it. Paul is saying, hey, I'm going to let you know right now. Ain't nobody going to get it. And, and if you're ability to know that this is my word and this is my truth is predicated by how many people support you in it, you're in trouble. It says right there, nobody knows except the Spirit. So you're going to have to be okay with good people not supporting you. With good people not believing in you. There's nothing wrong with them. It's not bad. They are ordained not to know. Because this is you and God. And this is God holding your ability to hear from Him. To receive knowledge from Him. And to stand in that knowledge regardless. I'm thinking about Noah. My wife talked about Noah this weekend. Last weekend. I'm thinking about Noah. No one rocked with Noah. And his wife probably went along like, all right, Noah. <laughs> you better be right. <laughs> no one rocked with Noah, but, but he had a word. And guess what? It wasn't just the belief. The, the, the actions that Noah exhibited and demonstrated in building the ark was not belief level insight. That was knowing level insight because it had never, no eye had seen the flood, no ear had heard the flood. It had entered into no one's heart the things that God was preparing. You're just tired, you know, when you're tired. None of us, let me tell you something, when I'm tired, my wife will tell you, tired and hungry, don't play with Torre. You're going to throw a piece of meat in that cage or something, sprinkle him, you know, wet him down with a water or something like that. It gets crazy when I'm sleepy. And I mean well. So it's not necessarily that, that you're off backsliding in some sort of sin, but, but sometimes we got to deal with that natural thing. we got to deal with that flesh thing. It's there. And what the writer is saying is like, yo, dude, I'm telling you, there's going to be a battle. The natural doesn't get it. I'm telling you right now, if you're in your flesh, you're not going to see it. And people who are in their flesh are not going to see it. And that's going to be the war. They don't receive the things of the spirit. For they are spiritually discerned. They're spiritually discerned. And so, so the things that you're called to do will be the areas that these great things. I believe God's calling us the great things. These will be the areas that attempt to discourage you the most. I, I got this for somebody too. And I, I believe it's going to make sense. Like when God is calling you to do something. And when you're really truly like on the right track. I want you to pay attention to 
feeling worn down. Feeling worn down and discouraged. I, I want you to pay attention to those moments where you believe in God for something like that. There's some of you in here right now. And you, you, you've been after something. And you've been after it for a little while. You've been after it for, 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 for a good little while, right? And you're tired. And you feel almost worn down in your pursuit of it. And or discouraged. And I just hear God saying, be not weary in your well-doing. For in due season you're going to reap. That there's something about... Being in that 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 Jesus guard moment, where you are, you're, you're on the road to destiny, but you're tired, and you're on the road to destiny, and you feel like you've given everything that you've got to give to it, and you don't have anything else to give to it, and you're tired, and you're so weary that literally you are are, are this close to quitting. Nevertheless, there's something on the inside of you, and you want to quit, but you never quit. Is that you? Anybody ever been there before? You you want to quit. You think you one day even might quit, but you never quit. There's something developmentally, there's something development-wise that happens when you're in, when, when you have taken that thing so far and you've been faithful, but now you are weary and you want to quit, but somehow, some way you don't. There's something very, very Jesus-like that takes place on the inside of you that makes winning worth it. And so I just want to talk to somebody and you're weary or you're discouraged and I was the enemy to your destiny. I would try to wear you out too. I would try to discourage you too, but let me tell you something. All you got to do is keep going. Keep living. Keep breathing. You're going to outlive discouragement. You're going to outlive weariness. You're going to outlive all of that and it's going to be in your rear view. I dare you. If you are committed to say I'm not going to be weary. I'm not going to give up. I might be tired, but I'm going to go the last mile. In favor, give God a roar. Come on. Give him a roar. I'm going all the way. Alright, after eight hours and coming home this is what it looks like I put some onion what onion soup in here not bad. Right, negative thought is the worst thing that you can have because it is an anti the antichrist is a negative thought that's antichrist I'm not saying it is an answer but I'm saying antichrist is a negative thought because it's against how Christ sees us are you tracking with me for I know the thoughts that he thinks towards me thoughts of peace and thoughts of thoughts and, and, and anyway so God knows there's a knowledge that there's, there's he transcends all of our our stuff and he brings us knowledge and he brings us truth and we know that we already understand that people may not get it right in fact they are ordained not to it's right there in the word right we know that I think it just needs a little bit more salt. I don't really put no seasoning in none of my food, but it's good. It's just, I wanted to have more flavor in it. Probably should have cut up some real okay. onions. We also know that the natural thing is not going to happen. I'm not going to see the natural. The natural will not encourage me in my knowing. Whether it's an inner natural or the natural that's outside of it, that's not going to encourage me. I already know that. But then this is kind of interesting because it says, these things we also speak. These things we also speak, we speak. And maybe the last thought that I want to leave you with is it is very, it's very important to, to stimulate and to encourage your posture of knowing for you to speak what you know as if it is truth. You got it. And here, this is something you, you be careful of what you agree with. There's some things that I'm believing God for right now. And, and some of those things involve other people. Okay? And other people may not have come to the place of knowledge yet. And that's okay because remember, it's for you to have other people. Right? They might be in belief. But you're in knowledge. And they come in and say, hey, let's keep my fingers crossed. And you can just smile at them. But don't agree with them. Because my fingers are crossed. This thing is done. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm already on to the next thing. So, so I want you to be careful how you speak about it. Oh, God, Phil. Preach, preach, preach. Because Not it is that. sinful and dishonoring to talk.
talk about something that God told you is truth in a way that would suggest that it is optional. I feel the Holy Spirit. You got to speak it. You have to speak it. I, I wrote something down. You, you got to speak it. And one of the reasons you got to speak it is because you have to announce what the spirit realm revealed to you into the realm that it will be manifest in. Oh, you got to get this. Oh, you got to get this. Yeah, 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 get this. Yeah, get this. The Bible says in the last days, the sons and daughters will prophesy. To prophesy is to speak forth 